Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got 11 new things to know about the new Garmin Venue 2 and 2S smartwatches. Now in this video, I'm gonna dive through all the new features, both the good and the bad, and I'm gonna start off with the software side of things and then kind of work my way into the hardware side of it, but you can use the YouTube chapters along the bottom there to skip ahead in the section that you want. Now before we get into the official 11 new things, a uh, quick thing up front, there's actually two Venue versions. There's the Venue 2 and then the 2S is a smaller one. They're identical feature-wise, they're identical price-wise at $300. 99 US dollars are the currencies on the screen right there. The only difference is being the size, uh, 45 versus a 40 millimeter, uh, and then the battery life is slightly bigger in the Venue 2 over the 2S. So the very first thing we're gonna dive into is the new strength training profile, but more importantly than that, the new muscle map pieces. Uh, so if I tap into the strength training option right there, I can swipe up and I see my workouts. Uh, these are structural workouts that are on the watch itself, but I can download boatloads of them from the Garmin Connect app. You can see a couple of them on the side right there. If I choose the total body muscle workout, uh, you'll see that it has four sets in it. Uh, each one of those sets has different sections in it, and I can see exactly what it's going to target muscle-wise. In other words, what's going to be sore later on. If I look at the bottom, it says barbell deadlift. I can then tap this little uh, video icon on the right-hand side, and it'll show me the exact move that it is there. Now, some of these are, of course, a little bit obvious. If I look down here, if I swipe down, uh, we know what a chin-up is, right? Like I think most people know what that is, but a lot of the moves may be a little more nuanced. And if you're not super familiar with the gym, this is helpful to be able to quickly look at this and see how it works. Once you're ready to start the workout, you just go ahead and press the timer to begin uh, and it'll automatically count the reps for you. And you can also swipe down in the screens uh, to see the exact details of that particular uh, step as well as how many reps that you're supposed to do uh, and how many steps left in the entire set before you move on to the next one. If you want to skip a set, you can do that as well by pressing the bottom right hand button uh, to move on to the next item. Okay, and a quick note, if you find this video interesting or useful, simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, there are new activity profiles beyond just strength training. Uh, number one, there's a new hiking profile. So that's great because it uses the barometric altimeter for that as opposed to having always categorized as run in the past. There's new high intensity interval training option as well as indoor climbing and bouldering. In the case of the high intensity interval training option, if I tap that, I'll see at the bottom, there's also a couple different modes. There's free, there's uh, timers and workouts. And I go into workouts and just like with the strength training, I can choose uh, some of these workouts here. And again, more that you can sync to the watch from the app itself. So I can say five minutes all out and you got the steps right there. Uh, you can see what I'm supposed to be doing, a push up. Again, pretty straightforward in most cases. There's notes down below if I want to, and it'll just iterate me through these steps one after another, just sort of like a coach getting you to the end there. Uh, now, despite all these new workout modes, there is no outdoor track workout mode, which I really hope to see here, considering the 400 245, which is $100 cheaper than this watch, uh, has that there. So while I understand that bouldering and indoor rock climbing supposedly has more appeal, I think there's probably way more people globally or even in the US that have access to an outdoor track than have access to an indoor climbing facility or even use an indoor climbing facility. Still, I guess more sport modes is better. Okay, so next there is a new advanced sleep tracking. Now Garmin's watches for years have had sleep tracking. So the concept of sleep tracking by itself isn't new. Instead, it's the algorithms behind it. This one now uses the first beat tracking, which tends to be a bit more advanced. And more importantly, you can see it on the watch itself each morning as opposed to having to open up the app. So if I scroll down here, we'll find my sleep, six hours and 32 minutes, I can tap on that. Uh, and I can go ahead and I can see details about it, like the sleep stages, uh, the overall kind of composition of the night, or what Garmin thinks about my sleep last night. And if I swipe up a bit more in this top right hand button right there, I can get a bit of kind of impact or why it might've been impacted that particular night. Uh, now in this case, it thinks it's because of strenuous exercise. No, it doesn't know my three kids. My three kids were all up for unknown reasons last night at like two, 3.30, etc. And you can in fact see that if I go down here, uh, right there, each of those pink lines is each time one of the children decided to awake and wake me up too. Now, another one that fits into that is a new updated body battery algorithms. Now you may be saying, ah, body battery has been around and it has been around. And what essentially this is, is like street fighter energy levels. Uh, it looks at all the things that goes on your day, primarily from a stress, workout, sleep standpoint, and tries to figure out how much energy you have. And I find that over the last couple of years, uh, as long as I'm wearing the watch continuously, it does a pretty good job at estimating that. But the big change here compared to the past is it's much harder to get a top body battery score from sleep than it used to be in the past. Uh, meaning if you have a crappy night's sleep, like me last night, uh, it's gonna show that very clearly here. Versus in the past, you might have got a pass on that and it may have been like 90% resumed. Uh, in fact, I can see that very clearly. If I look here on this side, this is from a month ago with a very similar uh, sort of week schedule. And you see, I hit that near 100% almost every single night. Versus over here is a venue two. And you can see again, on a very similar week of sleep, uh, I don't come anywhere near 100 every single time. Uh, showing me that 
what I already know, and that my sleep isn't always super consistent. Anyways, if you look at the body battery, you can swipe over the course of the day and see that, you know, last night starting at uh, about 12.30 or so, I went to bed at 15 body battery. It built up over the course of the night, sometimes faster, sometimes slower, till just before 8 o'clock where it topped out at 67, and then from then it was all downhill. Uh, now you can see at 1 o'clock it did a run, so that took a bit of a hit of it. Uh, now here I am at a little after 5 o'clock at 26. So I find this a pretty good proxy for my real life, uh, and this algorithm update seems to help a little bit. Next is the new health snapshot. Uh, what this does is kind of compile a lot of this stuff in together into a single point in time snapshot. So to access it, you press the upper right hand button right here, and you go down and you find that health snapshot. There we go. Boom. And then you simply sit. This is the best workout ever. Uh, you press this record and sit there for two minutes. As still as possible, as non-excited as possible, just, just chill. Here's my wife using the Venue 2S sitting there doing the sitting thing. And at the end of it, it'll then give you a summary. You can see the average heart rate, the average SpO2, the average respiration rate, the average stress, and your HRV values. All this stuff is then sent over to Garmin Connect where it's stored there, and then soon you'll also be able to export it out as a PDF and send it to doctors or whatever the case is. The idea here being that if you took this consistently at the same time each day or roughly thereabouts, uh, you might be able to develop trends over time. All of these metrics are already available within Garmin Connect Mobile, just kind of all over the place. Though HRV isn't actually directly seeable, available within Garmin Connect Mobile at this time, hopefully that's something that changed down the road. Next is the new fitness age. This is something that will take the data on your watch uh, from all those kind of components that we just talked about, and then roll that into your known weight, uh, you either input that in with your BMI, uh, or it'll pull it from a Garmin index scale, uh, and then give you an estimated fitness age. So you can see mine right there, essentially telling me that I could probably eat less cupcakes and it would reduce my fitness age. The important part though is that I'm still under my actual age, which is technically what matters here. So next we got the new widget glances, probably one of my favorite features here. In the past, if we looked at the Garmin Venue watch, uh, widgets basically took up the entire screen. So if I were to swipe down here, that's a widget right there, that's a widget, that's a widget, they take up the whole screen. In a lot of cases, you don't really need to take up the entire screen versus a widget glance. If I swipe down, you'll see there's like three of them per screen. There's steps, there's forest climbed, etc. cetera. Uh, and I can tap into these to see more details. So I can tap into steps. I can see there's my steps over the course of the day. One o'clock was my run, so a big increase in steps right there. And obviously virtually no steps last night. And I can do this for pretty much any uh, attribute in here. Heart rate, there's my heart rate over the course of the day. You can see this afternoon, there's my run. I took it off briefly right there, uh, and so on. So this is a much cleaner way of displaying all this stuff. Body battery, pulse ox, sleep. These are all widgets I can tap into to get more detail on if I want to. And this is a great place to talk about the next thing, which is challenges on the watch itself. So I can swipe on down to challenges in the widget glances menu. Uh, and you see I've got a single challenge there, a step challenge I've been challenged to. Somebody has gone and said, hey, I wanna challenge Ray to this uh, most number of steps in this course of the week. I tap on that, I wait for the data, and it comes back and it shows me winning. That's what I thought. So I'm winning against uh, Mr. Desfit here. You can find his channel linked on the screen somewhere right there. Uh, he's pretty cool, but he's he's still losing. Just like he lost last week too. I mean, I'm not gonna rub it in on this video or my UI video, but I'm just saying, I'm winning. Uh, so that's here, it's also on the app as well, and then you get a badge at the end of it, uh, but it's nice to have this right here. And in fact, if he were to go ahead and eclipse me briefly, or if I were to go ahead and go past him again, it'll actually notify me on the watch that that's happening. Okay, so now that we cover most of the software bits, let's talk about some of the hardware changes. Uh, and the first and most obvious one is on the back of the unit itself, which is a new optical heart rate sensor. Uh, and so you can see the pattern is different. Here is the old venue pattern uh, right there on this side here, Garmin Elevate 3.0 or Reef 3, and Garmin Elevate V4. Uh, you see it looks different. The most notable newness here is these four dots, one, two, three, four, on the outside, and those are the new infrared sensors. Uh, Garmin is using those in pulse ox only uh, to increase accuracy. And this scare has been pretty good for me, especially at sleep. I find that in the past, many of the Garmin watches would underestimate my blood oxygen levels uh, at sleep, versus this one here seems to be much closer than reality. So again, between like 96 and 99%. And I've got this handy dandy thing here to go ahead and cross-reference that. It's medical certified here in Europe to cross-reference all those numbers. From an accuracy standpoint overall of the new optical heart rate sensor, it's looking pretty darn good to me. Uh, I've got this all covered in my in-depth review, written review, down link below there for tons and tons of graphs and charts of both GPS and heart rate accuracy. Uh, but I would say overall, very, very strong. Uh, it's not perfect. Just a couple kind of very minor things, a couple beats here and there where it's off, but 
very, very strong overall. Next is a slightly updated AMOLED display. Uh, they've had AMOLED in the past, of course. Uh, the Venue SQ had an LCD display, but this is AMOLED. Uh, but they've increased the pixels very, very slightly. But the touchscreen and the display now is one piece. For in the past, there were technically two pieces. And more importantly than all of that, they've now gone ahead and merged the GPU and the processor into a single unit that's far more powerful in the past, which has led to Garmin Connect IQ 4.0 support. In fact, this is the very first watch to support Connect IQ 4.0 from Garmin. They talked about this months ago at the developer conference, but now we have the first piece of hardware to actually use it. How that'll be used? Yeah, we'll have to see. The general gist of it, though, is that Connect IQ 4.0 uh, allows apps to render more uh, and to, to do cooler things with the display side of it here without having as big of an impact on battery life of the actual watch itself. And then last on the new hardware bits is that it's got new rapid charging. Now, it's not like crazy rapid, but it's not bad. Garmin claims basically that you can put a watch that has no juice left, no battery on it, on a charger, and in 10 minutes, you'll have enough for a single hour run or a full day of smartwatch time. Finally, in addition to the rapid charging, there's also battery saver mode. So if I go into the menu right here, I can go down to settings, let's see, do, 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 do. battery manager, which is also new by the way, and you'll see battery saver, and I tap that. And when I tap this, it tells me all the things it's about to turn off. So it's gonna turn off the watch face, slow power, display timeout, Wi-Fi, brightness low, music disabled, activity, uh, auto start disabled, pulse locks off, gesture mode off. It's going like all off all the time. Uh, but it gets me a bit more battery life so it lasts a longer. You see the watch face is now this kind of boring one. Uh, it'll only turn on when I press a button. Uh, so if you're like at the end there, like I'm 18%, you need to last more than that. Uh, in this case, it'll get me an extra two days of battery life with 18% on. As far as overall battery life time, uh, it depends. Here's the battery chart of all the different modes there. I'd say this is pretty accurate. Uh, in fact, I would actually say that the always on battery life is better than Garmin claims. Anyways, there you go. A complete look at the Garmin Venue 2 and 2S. Don't forget as well, you still have the full in-depth review linked down below. You're seeing on the screen with tons, tons, tons more detail than I can possibly include in this video, as well as a full user interface tour video linked up there in the corner, uh, where it's basically like 15 to 20 minutes of me walking through all the menus a little bit slower uh, so I can explain how all the features work in a little bit more detail. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and whack that like button in the bottom there or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.